Okay, freshmen, this will serve as our lecture here over the Caribbean islands. Um, as far as the physical geography, we start talking about different island groups here when we talk about the Caribbean islands. So understand that we have the two groups um, of islands called the, uh, the Antilles. Okay, so the Greater Antilles refer to the larger islands of Cuba, Jamaica, Hispaniola, and Puerto Rico. Um, Hispaniola, that island contains two countries. Um, those countries are Haiti and the Dominican Republic. The Lesser Antilles, these are smaller islands in nature, and they're located closer to South America. I'll show you a picture here of those in a second. And then we also have the Bahama Islands. Um, all of these are examples of archipelagos. Um, an archipelago is simply, it's a, a chain of islands. Okay, so the Greater Antilles, the Lesser Antilles, and the Bahama Islands are all examples of archipelagos or island chains. Um, and see here you see a picture of, um, of, a, of the partial Caribbean. Um, here is the island of Hispaniola, this one island, right? And you have the country of Haiti and the Dominican Republic. And if this map were a little bit bigger up here, you would see Cuba, you would see Jamaica. Um, and these larger islands are, again, the Greater Antilles. These smaller islands kind of arcing up here from South America and including, you know, the islands of Aruba and such, you know, closer to South America, these are the lesser Antilles, the smaller um, Caribbean islands. As far as more physical geography, um, most of these islands are were formed from the top of underwater, underwater um, volcanoes that, you know, over several thousand years erupted, hardened, eventually created mountains. Um, and those volcanic mountains are generally more um, mountainous in nature, more rugged. The islands that are flatter in nature, those are usually coral islands. Again, coral islands are formed when microorganisms or when organisms in the sea died. Eventually, those that that uh, that matter kind of forms. It hardens. It creates something like limestone. Eventually, it creates an island. So those flatter terrain islands are coral islands. Um, our Caribbean islands all experience a marine climate. They're all located within the tropics, so they're. 80 degrees year round and, and mostly humid and a lot of them receive a, a good deal of rain. Um, but a lot of their climate is so much based on the sea and the wind, water temperature and, and, and the fronts that the wind is moving in. Um, some islands, if they're on the windward side of the mountain, they're going to receive more rain. Windward side of the, excuse me, windward side of the island. If you're on the windward side of the island, that side of the island faces the prevailing winds that blow in um, weather fronts. And generally speaking, if, if an island, if you're on the windward side of the island, there's going to be more rain. And on the leeward side, that is the side of the, of the island facing away from the wind, um, there's going to be less rain. As far as uh, a little bit about culture and, and ethnicity here, um, again, these Caribbean islands at one point in time were home to, to natives. A lot of them were. Um, but because these island nations were generally smaller in, in population and such, what does happen is after Columbus and Europeans start arriving in the late 15th century, what starts to happen is you see a lot of the Native Americans get um, killed off by disease like smallpox and such. So the native population of these of these islands is is not nearly like what it is in, in Mexico or in Central America. Um, however, what does happen over time is again Europeans slavery was a thing. Um, they bring over mostly African-American slaves. And now what you see happen is as slavery got abolished is you see um, a high African-American ancestry in the Caribbean islands. And because of that, that African culture, it plays a very strong influence on many places in the Caribbean. Um, we also see a, a growing Asian culture there. Um, after slavery had been abolished, what happens is more Asians came to the Caribbean islands seeking work. Um, on the plantations, whether it was sugarcane or bananas or, you know, coconuts, whatever it might have been. And so we see a growing Asian culture in the Caribbean islands as well. Um, as far as population, most people that live in the Caribbean, they live in independent countries. The independent countries that are not controlled by any other nation include Cuba, Haiti, Dominican Republic, Barbados, Trinidad, and Tobago. Um, some of the other island nations still have links to other countries or they're maybe a colony or however, a territory. So the United States actually has two um, territories. One's a commonwealth, one's a territory, kind of the same thing. In the Caribbean, Puerto Rico is a U.S. commonwealth. Uh, people who live in Puerto Rico, born in Puerto Rico, are considered to be U.S. citizens. 
as are the people who are born in the U.S. territory of the Virgin Islands. Now, the United Kingdom, Britain, they also hold some various islands as territories, um, like they have the British, um, the British Virgin Islands, for example. Um, and now, like the Bahamas and Jamaica are also technically British territories, but they're self-governing. Okay, so there is that as well. As far as economics, um, agriculture here is very important. Um, that's kind of like one of the, the main ac economic activities. Um, we see sugarcane, bananas, and cotton are some of the more important crops. Shipping is another one um, as far as exporting agricultural products like crops. And then tourism. Um, and the thing about tourism is a lot of these islands are very dependent on that. Um, however, understand like the companies that own hotels there or the airlines that bring in uh, tourists, those are not oftentimes owned by the nation um, or excuse me, are oftentimes they are not owned by people within the nation. So for that reason, um, you know, it's not as economically beneficial, but understand it does create a lot of jobs. Um, however, the workers that work at these hotels oftentimes or these resorts um, in these Caribbean nations are not paid very well. But tourism is a huge part of their economy. And then far as just some tension and, and some other issues, and, and you see a lot of this kind of similar to Central America. Um, two, two of the Caribbean islands that have a, a history of some communism and dictatorships, Cuba, which um, for a long time was controlled by the communist dictator Fidel Castro. You know, the United States, we cut off our relationship with Cuba for a period of time while they were very much linked to the Soviet Union. Um, and Cuba became a very impoverished nation, especially after the fall of the Soviet Union. They quit receiving money from them. And in Haiti, another nation where you see kind of a similar thing, some dictatorship and political instability. Um, and understand that these Caribbean islands, for the most part, even despite the fact like Puerto Rico, a U.S. Commonwealth, a part of the United States, technically not a state, but a Commonwealth, you still see a lot of poverty and issues there. And um, some of that's caused by instability. Now, Puerto Rico, in the grand scheme of things, is you know more so stable than a lot of the other Caribbean nations. However, so many of these Caribbean nations have been, you know, marred with um, or by, um, by natural disasters, whether it's hurricanes, tropical storms, earthquakes, and that causes a lot of issues there with infrastructure and and other things. And a combination really of some of the political things and some of these things associated with, you know, the mass poverty is what leads people to want to leave. Um, the people who live in these nations, a lot of times they, they come to the United States, try to find work and then send money back to their home nation. Um, but again, one of those reasons why people do leave. Um, so um, that's what we'll cover here at the Caribbean. Please let me know if you have questions.